Okay, we're back in Adobe Captivate 12.2 here, and this time we're gonna be talking about image editing. Now, I kind of like the simplicity of how things work in Adobe Captivate 12. However, I found that there's a lot of clicks required when it comes to setting up and editing your images. Let's first of all look at our image background. So if I go back up to the slide level here, you can see we've got slide background, and everything in this section is related to that. Now, I can make some choices outside of the edit image dialog. I can choose things like, do I want it to fill my slide? That's probably what I would always choose. And, you know, we could choose either left justifying it, centering it, and so on. But I really don't get to see a preview of what that looks like. I can click on the responsive design options and see what it looks like on different size devices, but it really doesn't help me in this particular case here. Now, I can go into edit image and I'll see a preview of what that background looks like, but again, I don't get to see what it looks like on tablet or smartphone, which might be different. So I'm gonna cancel out of here. Let's take a look at images as a component of the blocks that are on our slide here. So we have this image of three people here. I'll select that. And what do we wanna have happen with these folks here? Well, do we wanna fill the space and then choose to right align it or left align it, depending on what you wanna keep in focus? But, you know, with this particular style here, it may not work out so well because I can't really preview the edit. If I stick with fill and we stick with right and let's go up a level to select in this case here, let's go fixed height. That's going to change the way our slide looks. We'll choose our image again and we'll right justify it. So I have a lot of clicking that I have to do to preview the different ways I can configure this image. Now, when I finally go in to edit that, again, all I can see is just the one view. If I wanna see what it looks like here, I don't really get that option because I can't edit it, I can't see it at the same time. So one of the things that I would do in this case here is I might tighten this up so that when we do see it, we'll see maybe just the guy on the right-hand side here. So let's save that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's not ideal. It, again, I'm doing a lot of clicks to try and get this image to work for me here. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've updated to Adobe Captivate 12.3, and I want to use this slide in particular because here we've got a component image and we've got a background image that shows through. And uh, in this case here, let's start off with our background image. So if we click on edit image now, the improvements that are in 12.3 really show through here. So you can see that I get a preview of what my slide will look like in all three different circumstances, desktop, tablet, smartphone, and even as a bonus, you can turn your smartphone sideways to see what that will look like. So let's go back to normal portrait mode, which I think is what most people will do. And we can choose not only our crop, like if we wanted to maybe change the way these dots appear in the bottom right-hand corner, we can adjust the crop. But more importantly, we can actually set the image focus to the right-hand side, because notice the little dot pattern isn't showing up over here. But if I choose right and choose the image focus to always remain on the right side, we'll always get our little multi-dot pattern in the bottom right-hand corner, which is nice here. And we can, of course, save this now. Now, this saves me a lot of clicks because I would have had to make these changes outside of the edit image back in Adobe Captivate 12.2. Now let's take a look at one of our component images here. If we select this and we click on the edit image, again, we have different controls. We still see, of course, the layout as you would see it for, for the three different views, and you can also go landscape for mobile, but we can choose our image display, responsive behavior, and image focus options here. Now this is useful, let's say when we are on 
mobile, I don't want to see all three of these folks. So I'm going to change this responsive behavior to fixed height. You see what happens there. And I want the dude on the right to be always in the focus or the frame of the shot here. So let's choose right. And uh, so now we always will have, we'll have maybe the two of them here. And you can play around with the crop to make it more appropriate for the right hand side dude right there. That looks pretty good here. Cause I get, you know, I've got all three of them on desktop. I get two of them on tablet and we get one of them on mobile there. That works good. Press save to commit those changes and we're good to go. A lot less clicks, a lot less closing the image edit screen and going back to it multiple times to try and accomplish the same thing. It's a nice user interface improvement.